Hello all, this is Menopause Taylor bringing you the state of menopause in the world today. And here we are again, right in the middle of our WHAM series. What's WHAM? Well, it's the acronym W-H-A-M for what happens at menopause. So far, I've presented two of the WHAM series what dries up at menopause, and what shrinks at menopause. So now it's time for what grows at menopause. <laughs> you see, these perspectives help you see the common themes for what happens at menopause, and it helps you make sense of what's going on. If you have even one single symptom of menopause, or even if you have none at all, you should definitely listen to this podcast and all the other WHAM podcasts because they may open your eyes to things to which you were totally blind. Actually, you know, quite a few things get bigger at the time of menopause. And as with the last podcast tutorial, I call these tutorials because, you know, I'm all about education and I'm a nerd and I teach and all that. <laughs> but as with the last two podcast tutorials, there are two different categories of things that grow. There are physical things and behavioral things. Here's the list of things that grow physically. Your joints, your wrinkles, hair where you don't want it, gray hair, your abdomen your pores, and your veins. And here's a list of things that grow behaviorally. Your moodiness, your disinterest in sex, your level of fatigue, your impatience, your sense of self, your independence, your desire for divorce, and your anxiety. As you can see, some of the behavioral things that grow at menopause are actually desirable. None of the physical things are desirable. <laughs> so let's just jump into this and discuss each of these. The first thing on the list is your joints. They swell. Most women notice joint swelling and joint pain at the time of postmenopause. Now in the last podcast, I taught you that your joint mobility shrinks. And that's largely because your joints swell. Your joints are hinges, and the more swollen the hinge, the less mobility it has. So both the swelling and the reduced mobility of your joints are a direct consequence of estrogen loss. It makes sense, right? If the joint gets larger and swells, it's not going to move as much. So you have growth of the swelling. It's a thing that's augmented. And you have decrease, a decrease in the mobility. So that's something that shrinks. So if they fit into the shrinkage and growth parts of this WAM series in a different way, but for the same reason. Next is wrinkles. In the, in the podcast called What Dries Up at Menopause, you learned that, you're, that you lose the collagen, collagen in your skin, and that is really what causes your skin to wrinkle. Now, of course, you lose the collagen because you lose your estrogen. In any case, once your estrogen is gone, your wrinkles will grow. They'll get longer and deeper. They'll start out as fine little lines, and they just keep growing from there. The only place you don't grow wrinkles is in your vagina, which is really where you want them. It's all just so backward. Your vagina is the only place you want as many wrinkles as you can get because the wrinkles prevent the shrinkage and the drying and the lack of, of, of mobility of your vagina that you need for intercourse. So you see that sometimes things are good and sometimes they're bad, but the principle is the same. The other thing that grows is hair where you don't want it. Now, hair growth is due to testosterone. And what happens at menopause is that your estrogen disappears earlier than and more completely than your testosterone. So it's really about ratios and concentrations. Your testosterone to estrogen ratio favors testosterone. And the testosterone in your blood is more concentrated than the estrogen is. 
So all the things that make men hairier than women start happening to you. You start growing coarse, dark whiskers on your chin and chest, or you may notice a visible mustache. And at postmenopause, women start needing to pluck, bleach, and get electrolysis or laser treatments to get rid of the hair. So it, it makes sense when you think about what's going on physiologically. And most women also notice increased growth of fine lanugo hair on their face. Now this is like very fine little blonde soft hairs that make your face look like it has a very fine coat of fur. You can see it if the lighting is right. Like if the woman is sitting in sunlight and she'll turn her head and you'll see that there's literally a layer of soft, it's really pretty <laughs> hair, but it's on her face. If you remove that hair, you'll be shocked at how much you had. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just, there's so much there and you just can't believe how much there really is. Now, this is also when most women start noticing gray hair everywhere. If you haven't already started coloring your hair, postmenopause is when you'll start to notice a lot more gray. I mean, everyone I know colors their hair. I'm the only person I know who doesn't. And I actually have squiggly, shiny silver hairs here and there. Of course, I've been postmenopausal for over 25 years, so I don't know why I'm just starting to have gray hair now. All right, now, here's something that we all notice that grows. Abdominal growth. Menopause deposits fat right in your belly. There's even a name for this. It's called truncal obesity. Your trunk is your abdomen. Now, this is all about the loss of one particular kind of estrogen, estradiol, D-I means two. See, estradiol is the estrogen you loved. It's the one that made you feel normal and sexy, but poof, at menopause, it disappears. And when it disappears, your metabolism slows way down and you start depositing fat right in your belly. So you go from having that hourglass glass figure with that tiny little waist to having a square shape and a belly that is something like you've never had before. And those fat cells in your belly produce a different kind of estrogen called estrone, O-N-E o -N -E for one. Estrone is the estrogen we hate. It's associated with weight gain and an increased risk for a heart attack, and your own body produces it. This growth of your abdomen greatly increases your risk of a heart attack. And there happen to be specific abdominal parameters that put you at high risk of a heart attack. All of the following constitute truncal obesity and greatly increase your risk of a heart attack. Number one, a waste to hip ratio of greater than 0 0.8. Number two, a waist measurement of more than 35 inches or more than 88.9 centimeters. And number three, an apple shape as opposed to a pear shape. Now, you have to be careful with the first parameter, the waist to hip ratio of greater than 0.8. You do not have to be fat to have a waist-to-hip ratio of 0.8. This is about body shape. If you have skinny hips and not much of an hourglass figure, you can, have, you can very well have a waist-to-hip ratio of 0 0.8. Mine is 0 0.8. Of course, I have the figure of a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> with boobs. <laughs> so if you look at a chart of waist to hip ratios, you'll see that this is a parameter that is not enough by itself to put you at high risk for a heart attack. Of all the things I teach you in this podcast about what grows at menopause, this information about your abdominal growth is the most important by far. The next thing on the list is your pores. If you're in the habit of looking at your face with one of those 
magnifying mirrors? <laughs> Be prepared. <laughs> Your pores will start to look huge at postmenopause. And that's because they actually grow at postmenopause. The culprit? Estrogen loss, once again. Of course, if you apply makeup, it clogs those big pores and it increases your acne. And the more you clog your pores, the bigger they get. It is a vicious cycle. So you might want to wear less makeup at postmenopause. And the last physical thing that grows are your veins. Spider veins, varicose veins, all veins. You see them everywhere. Look at an older person. They have them on the sides of their head. You see veins in places that you didn't see on younger people. And the reason veins grow at menopause is because you lose your estrogen. You see, estrogen determines the strength of the vein wall. Without estrogen, the vein wall becomes weak and it starts to balloon. The more it balloons, the more it bulges. So most women notice vein growth everywhere at postmenopause. Okay, so now I've depressed you enough, but let's move forward to the behavioral things that grow at menopause. Some of these might make you a little bit happier. <laughs> the first, not this one, the first and most significant is your moodiness. <laughs> there are three levels of moodiness. There are mood swings, irritability, and depression. All three grow significantly with your transition into menopause. Moodiness, moodiness and irritability are more common during perimenopause, the transition. But depression is more common at postmenopause, which is after the transition. Mood issues are one of the biggest problems at all times of your postmenopausal life. And that's one of the reasons that antidepressants are used so commonly. Unfortunately, too many physicians give women antidepressants when they should be giving them hormones, HRT. And of course, too many women prefer antidepressants over HRT too. Antidepressants, though, can only improve this one aspect of your menopause, whereas HRT can improve all aspects of it. But you know, it's gotten to where woman after woman after woman tells me that she goes into her doctor's office and she complains of all these things that have to do with menopause. You know, 22 symptoms of menopause, including vaginas and joints and all parts of your body. And time and time again, they tell me that the doctor just automatically hands them a, an antidepressant or suggests an antidepressant. And they're offended by it because they think, wait a minute, I just complained about all sorts of things and the only thing you're going to treat is my apparent depression. Many of the women just say, I'm not taking that. I'm not depressed. And if you say that, good for you because you aren't depressed. You have estrogen deficiency and it causes you to feel some symptoms of depression, but you don't have classical depression. It's not fixed by an antidepressant. It's fixed by replacing the hormone that is lost and whose loss has caused you to feel depressed in the first place. And it's only one of 22 symptoms. Next is disinterest in sex. I've heard many a postmenopausal woman say, I don't care if I ever have sex again. A growing disinterest in sex is due mostly to loss of testosterone. But I'm separating disinterest in sex from pain with sex. Pain with sex is due to loss of estrogen, which causes vaginal dryness and vaginal shrinkage. I talked about those in the last two podcasts. But the behavioral, mental disinterest in sex is due to loss of testosterone, which usually occurs about two years after you become postmenopausal. So if you look.